Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome back to the Resistance broadcast, and that is exactly what we will be saying to Star Wars Rebels as the show ends its four-season run this coming Monday. How will it all end? The answers are just around the corner. My name is John Hoey. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have a fun one planned for you. We're going to find out if the Force is with us on a variety of topics and stories, and we will discuss what would Padme have done with Luke and Leia if she didn't die? and what trajectory that could have sent the saga on if that was the case. A reminder that our giveaway of The Last Jedi Bundle is active and happening right now, and to enter to win The Last Jedi Blu-ray, The Last Jedi Novelization, and two Resistance Broadcast shirts, all you have to do is follow us on Twitter at RBATSWNN and retweet that contest tweet. Two guys who are ineligible from entering this contest are with us today. As always, it's James Bainey and Patrick Covey. What's up, guys? What's up, man? I'm excited to talk about that Padme thing, but I do have to make a correction. You said two guys who are ineligible, but it should be three. It's it's me and and Pat and, and Bill, who's going to be doing Is the Force With You in a few minutes. Oh, Bill, that's right. I actually, Bill. yeah, Bill is on Mimbin right now in a mud wrestling tournament. So he is Ooh. not, yeah, he's not going to be with us tonight, oh. but he should be back on monday i think i'm gonna have to think about this for a little while yeah ponder on that so i guess we'll have to have someone else host that segment but uh pat you're here right what i'm out of the vault again thanks for unlocking this john yeah (laughs) yeah none of those questions this episode but we do need to find out if the force is with us guys so let's just get it going i guess let's see eeny meeny miny poe Buy our t-shirt on our website. With the the Tinky Winky. With the Tinky Winky and the Poe. I'll tell you what. Yeah. E- eeny, meeny, miny, baney. James Baney, how about you let us know if the Force is with us this week? Take it away, man. All right, guys. I'm back. Bill Sheehy. No, I'm just playing with you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we're starting this off just the same way that Bill does it every single week, exactly as he enters into this uh, section. In the words of the late, great Frank Oz, a seat you will take. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, that's pretty good. Back in 1977, a man named Colin Cantwell designed some starships for the upcoming Star Wars movie from the up-and-coming director, George Lucas. Well, today we got a look via Hot Wheels toys at two of those ships, which have apparently been repurposed for the Solo, a Star Wars story. Note my inflection. Here is my question to you guys. Lucasfilm should move away from scraping the well and old, unused concepts and create new ideas. John, I'm asking you first, is the Force with you? Yes, scrap it. It's a lose-lose to go back to old, unused concepts. On one hand, it allows people to criticize for lack of originality and creativity, like an ad agency digging up old pitch ideas to sell some products. And then you have the crowd who will start saying, It was not used for a reason, so why is it valuable now? Uh, There are many creative people in this company with Lucasfilm and their designs and their special effects and their models who can come up with new ideas and concepts. And frankly, I hate to say it, I'm a little tired of bowing down to Ralph McQuarrie and and all these concept arts all the time. Like, everyone keeps saying Ralph McQuarrie. Well, I mean, we have to move forward at some point. We're moving our characters forward. We're moving our stories forward. We got to move the designs forward, too. So, yes, the force is with me. It's time to scrap and not scrape the bottom of the well. Time to move on. (laughs) Patrick, what are your thoughts on this situation? I'm trying to do my best Bill impression. Lucasfilm moving away from unused concepts and creating new ones. Is the force with you? 
Yeah, the force is mostly with me here. I do like the idea of them starting to do some, you know, some new content pushing, start getting these creative juices flowing over there at Lucasfilm, start bringing up some new ship designs, start showing us some planets we've never thought we would ever see before. Give us what we will just, it will just blow our minds. Just keep giving us this awesome stuff. However, I will say some of this Colin Cantwell stuff coming back, this dude like hardly ever got anything uh, actually used in the original Star Wars. I'm glad that now that we're back in this era, you know, pre A New Hope in the canon storyline, I'm glad they're starting to use some of this stuff, just kind of slightly peppering it in there. Well, I'm going to have to go with the force is a little meh with me on this one. No, I'm just playing around. No, I'm actually a hundred percent. I'm actually with John on this one. I think we've, I think my opinion on these types of things have been in regular, like I really don't care a whole lot when they go back and they grab so-and-so to do something. Uh, and then they're reusing his stuff. It's cool every once in a while, but I feel like with star Wars, they tend to do it a lot. And I say, give new creators, new content creators, the ability to create new ships and, and give everything like a fresh image well I don't know it's just it's all the same thing but it's all different and being able to use those old concept arts it I don't know it just doesn't really feel like it's that important plus this thing has like satellite dishes on the front and Mm -hmm. stuff on one of them it's it's I don't know maybe they're doing that on purpose but to give like Han a specific like tongue-in-cheek line like oh those round dishes look pretty cool I would put one of those on my (laughs) ship but uh, um So as far as them, you know, kind of getting away from that stuff and moving forward, I say the force is with me. On to the next one. Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers? (laughs) Now, anyway, (laughs) Super Mario Brothers was released on Nintendo Switch uh, and it outsold Battlefront 2, which was on all sorts of different platforms. Battlefront 2 was supposed to be the revival of the series from the failures of Battlefront 1 and create stability in the Star Wars gaming with EA and its creator, and it was damaged to the widely criticized microtransaction feature, which was just totally crazy. Nobody really liked that, and they got (laughs) really reamed for it. So here's my question to you guys. It's time for Star Wars games to say goodbye to Electronics Arts for good. Patrick, is the Force with you? Um, The Force is kind of meh with me, as Bill would say. <laughs> um, I think that EA does have... EA does have one last final ditch effort with their upcoming game from Respawn Entertainment if they so choose to keep making this game. Uh, I did a little bit of research into this. It looks like Respawn... Even though it has ties to EA, they have a little bit more flexibility, uh, unlike the visceral situation we just saw a couple of months back where they completely shut down the studio. Um, If they can listen to the fans 100%, make a great campaign, tie in heavily with canon in a a huge way, add a depth, uh, a very depth-filled storyline where it actually feels like you have to play this game and grind for hours and hours and hours, I think you're going to head in the right direction. And the studio needs to start listening to the fans or at least start talking with the fans. That's been a huge problem with EA where they they make the content they want to make, but they are like trying to push the fans out. They're trying to remove negative tweets and, and negative feedback just to make their game look so much better. That leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth when you're trying to shudder the voice of your fans, the people who are purchasing your game. As James would say, world building. <laughs> Take this in a new direction, and don't forget, Battlefront 2 still has more seasonal content and storyline updates on the way, so don't completely give out hope on Battlefront 2. There's still more fun stuff on the way. Well, Pat seems to say, let's give him one more shot, but it's a slippery slope. John, do you agree with him? (laughs) Is the Force with you? It's time for Star Wars games to say goodbye to EA. The Force is with me. Um, Yes, um, Star Wars games should never struggle. Look how great the movies are doing, the shows are doing. It's insane to me that two battlefronts in a row have sputtered and fallen like a Star Destroyer with Swiss cheese holes in it. Um, I don't even know what (laughs) Nintendo Switch is, and Mario is beating it on one platform, destroying all the sales of Battlefront 2. That is embarrassing. As one comedian I like, Sebastian Maniscalco, would say, EA, aren't you embarrassed? It's like an ex promising you, 
I'll change. I promise you I'll change. Take me, give me another chance. Give me another chance. Then you take them back. And then they go back to the old nonsense they keep doing. EA had its chance. It's like Michael Scott said, fool me once, strike one. Fool me again, strike three. You're done, EA. <laughs> it's time to move on. Let's get Star Wars, Star Wars games over to another vehicle and let's get some real good Star Wars games, and maybe I'll actually buy another one for the first time in like 10 years. It's like George W. Bush once said, fool me once, shame on me, fool, well, you, you should feel ashamed. You can't fool me again. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what it was. I'm sorry. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't fool me again. <laughs> now, with the electronics art thing, man, I think, I think you guys, you had a shot. This, you know, you've been making Star Wars games for a long time, and all of a sudden, as soon as it comes back big, full in effect, you thought you would take advantage of the whole system, and it backfired hard. Mm. Your shot was this Battlefront 2 game, and I think, you know, all props to the people that were involved with the canon and the story and the characters oh, and absolutely. the way they handled all the marketing, mm-hmm. but, like, EA is known for this type of... of um, of way they're handling the microtransactions and this is how their company makes a profit and they are the biggest company video game company for a reason but the reason is is because they are kind of in some ways taking advantage of their players they know that they're not going to give up video gaming so we you know let's just ream them for all that we can i think that to say that ea needs to continue to be the person who is doing this is to say that other companies can't make a good game and we know that's crazy there's tons yeah. of other franchises and game series that have awesome stories i mean even look at call of duty which is one of the biggest video game franchises of all time and they go back back and forth between multiple studios Mm -hmm. you know what i mean one time it's done by this studio and the next one's out and like nobody really i mean there are some people that kind of know the differences but for the most part like it's just the new call of duty game and we're all pumped on it now i'm gonna ask you guys a quick question that doesn't have anything to do with star wars what do you guys think the three biggest video game franchises of all time are um bubble bobble 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 is not the correct answer is that even the game pat what do you think (laughs) Number one, Super Mario Brothers. Number two, Call of Duty. And number three, this is always slippery. Slippery slope, you could slippery say. Slippery slope. Because number three is always changing. It's probably, right now, Destiny. Destiny's probably up there at that top of the list. Um, I know uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, League of Legends nah, and Overwatch are, are now really trying to take that top spot. Those two games are the MOBA games. They are killing it right now. The Don't biggest video game franchises of all time Mike are Tyson's Mario, Pokemon. I forgot and, about Pokemon. And Tetris. Believe it or not, Tetris is the third biggest video game franchise. Actually, I don't know if it's third or first. It's just I know that those are the top three. But that's why when when it doesn't surprise me that a Mario game would beat a Star Wars game because Star Wars games really even aren't on this list of gaming. It's just Mm -hmm. one aspect of what Star Wars does. But moving on to the next one, we have a bit of a fun story here, but a serious one in the fact that it was a broken tradition. This comes via our friend from ABC News, Skywalker Sound, audio guru, Matthew Wood, confirmed that The Last Jedi was the first Star Wars film to not have the famous Lucasfilm tradition, the Wilhelm Scream. Now, if you're not unfamiliar with the Wilhelm Scream, you may actually remember it from the that weird sound that was at the beginning of each one of our podcasts a little while ago. And it sounds like this. So, my question to Patrick and to John is, now that the chain is broken, Star Wars should keep the famous Wilhelm Scream soundbite in the past and continue to move on without it. John, is the force with you? No. Um, use it sometimes. Don't use it sometimes. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, you know? Like, now they're kind of free from, like, the chains of, like, oh, man, we have, I totally forgot. We had to find a Wilhelm scream here. Where's the stormtrooper falling where I could throw this in here? So, I mean, use it. Bring it back if you, like, say, oh, you know what? I'm doing a Star Wars movie. I want to use the Wilhelm scream. But just because the chain broke doesn't mean we have to throw it away forever so uh no the force is not with me just use it when you have to use it now they're kind of free to use it whenever they want whenever they don't want 
So I kind of dig it. So no, the force is not not with me. We don't have to bury this thing completely. So Patrick, John says that the force is kind of meh with him. He says, use it sometimes, use it sparingly maybe, but don't completely kill the tradition. Do you agree with him? Is the force with you? Yeah, I got to agree with John here. The force is kind of meh here on this. I do like the idea of having the Wilhelm scream appear in future Star Wars content. Uh, However, sparingly, I don't feel like we need it anymore. This has opened up the floodgates for whatever this new scream is that they talk about in the clip. And it makes me want to go back and look now because they said not only is this scream, uh, this new one in The Last Jedi, it's in Rogue One. So this is the second time they've used this. It's making me even more interested to find out what this new thing is. And I kind of like this take on it. Show us something new. If you want to put in the old stuff, put it in too. It's perfectly fine with me. For me, the force is with me because I say, I don't need this thing. This has never been something interesting to me. It's been years and years and years and people were like, oh, it's in every Star Wars movie. And I, I look it up and I find it and I'm like, okay. And then it, I, yeah, I hear it. I hear it every once in a while. It pops out and it's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and like, I honestly feel like 0.001% of Star Wars fans like are in the theater and they're like, Oh, hey, did you hear that? That was a little home scream, you know? Yeah. Like, that's such a, a, a thing that, like, now you're putting the people, they just made the bold move to, like, cut it off, you know? That's if they're like, look, yeah. we feel like this thing has to be stuck in here somewhere, and I guess you're right, John, like, wh- whatever, if somebody later down the line wants to use it, go ahead, use mm-hmm. it, but, like... I, I want it to be done. I want it to be gone. I don't want it to be something that somebody's like looking for every time. And then they can talk to their girlfriend and their girlfriend's like, what are you talking about? And then it ruins the movie because these two people are arguing over the, a Wilhelm screen. Was that the and Wilhelm? Was watch, that the Wilhelm? Was that yeah, the Wilhelm? I'm trying to watch the movie, you know, so I got to say the force is with me with this. I say just move on and forget the Wilhelm scream. But that pretty much is all the force that we can give out today. We're done with this segment. We're moving on. We got a deeper discussion to get into. John, what are we talking about this week? Taking a seat we did. Huh? 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 (laughs) We are not, we are again for the second week in a row, not doing a Star Wars war. Um, We are getting into a discussion Who's Mace Windu? I never heard of him. I have heard of Samuel L. Jackson, but who knows? Who knows what's canon oh. these days and what's not? It's getting wild out there. Um, great. Now, the discussion this week just came off of a tweet that um, I was on the train to Hasbro, and I was like, what would happen if Padme didn't give up the will to live and survived, and would she have still given up Luke and Leia to hide them from Vader or would she have tried to run away herself and create a new identity like a witness protection kind of thing with the kids and so I was thinking that to myself and a lot of people started chiming in with their thoughts on it so I said let's make this a discussion so I guess let's pretend that that little droid doctor was talking to Obi-Wan and he said uh, she's perfectly healthy and she's gonna live Instead of saying for whatever reason, yeah. Instead of saying for whatever reason, we're losing her. Yeah. Good setup. So John. she's perfectly healthy and she's gonna be fine. Um, so I just wanted to bring up that thought. If we take the story and do a little Doc Brown space time continuum and change the trajectory here a little bit and say she lives, what does she do with the babies and uh, what happens to the story from there? All right. Well, I was when I was first proposed with this, my thought was and I figured we might go different directions. So I didn't want to ask or clarify. But does this mean that she lives, but all the events of four, five and six still have to happen the way that they did? So so like this is like like George Lucas sitting down and saying, all right, well, I want Padme to live and I'm not going to kill her off. So he writes it that she lives. But wh- how do we take it? How did the events mm. change that lead to that? Or is it just straight up like, you know, like you were saying, I guess, like a, a time machine DeLorean. He's in an, an alternate skewed second 1985 where, yeah. you know, all the events are different and Biff owns a casino and all this other stuff. So to me... I took it as that second one, but, but Pat, what did, how did you take the question in the first place? Did you take it like that too? You want to know how I took it? How did you take it? Ooh, bah. Oh, I thought he was going to say with cream and sugar. 
<laughs> no, I was going off the whole robot <laughs> thing from uh, from episode three. Uh, mm. But I feel like, and this is always such a tricky thing, because if she would have lived, you start to think like, well, if she kept the kids, like, how would that influence, you know, the rest of their life? Like, would they have to constantly be on the run, uh, running for their lives uh, in fear of what their father ultimately could do? And that's ultimately the thing. The idea that comes to mind is, could you imagine Padme just running all over the galaxy, like trying to hide from these people, trying to disguise and hide mm-hmm. her children? And would they ultimately, would that ultimately change Leia and Luke into very fearful people? How would they view the galaxy? How would they, in turn, uh, set up for this? And would Luke ultimately still have that confrontation with his father, or how would that be played out differently? That's that's the. That's the mentality I'm going with here. Like, how how can they deal with the situation? Ultimately, if it's like any other Disney film, Padme will probably die off at some point down the line. But that her staying alive could really influence and change the way they view the galaxy too. Yeah. Well, I think that this this whole thing kind of it, it's really dangerously close to fan fiction, which I don't it necessarily really want our podcast to be about fan fiction, but don't worry. I went straight fan fiction and I wrote out the whole thing of how <laughs> I thought this was going to happen. And it starts with vampires and werewolves. <laughs> so Edward is sitting on a, in a tree and, and Bella looks up and now I'm just messing around, but um, no, I did actually write out this thing. Like, John, do you want to do you want to present well, your thing before I get I, I get into I what I had two I angles I was looking at this from. So it would be compelling if she still sent them away, where Vader could then find out of their existence and go after her. Kind of like like you betrayed mm-hmm. me and you you didn't no, you didn't tell me you were having twins and like he separates from the Empire and still has his personal vendetta while still doing Empire stuff. I think that could be kind of cool and. I heard people say that, oh, if she survived, he just would have turned back. Uh, no way. No way. Yeah, he made no, his choice, presented one. it to her. She told him no, said, you're going down a path I cannot follow. And he still proceeded. He even choked her out, almost killed her. And plus, he felt betrayed thinking that she brought Kenobi there with her. So there's no chance. He already made his choice. So that theory, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't get into that one. Now, if she kept them with her, and try to go into like a witness protection under a new name, uh, like Lana Halleck. I don't know, something like that. Uh, that <laughs> Liana Halleck. Liana. Well, she would be Lana. The other one would be Liana. Uh, that could be a, yeah, that oh, could gotcha. be a cool story yeah, too, with sense. Vader knowing she's still alive and making again his personal mission to track her down using spies and stuff like that. Like, did oh you saw her or you know that kind of thing. Uh, even use it in a comic or something of that nature. The yeah. Inquisitor so program to, to find her and then take the children. And then I was trying to think of both of those paths there, her giving them away still. You could see that path still where Luke and Leia have their natural four, five, six path. Or if she kept them and told them about everything or tried to hide it from them, then you could open up another spider web of where it could go. So it, it's very interesting. Like her death, as like as absurd as it was, because she just kind of gave up the will to live because they said she was perfectly healthy. Mm-hmm. So I guess she quote unquote died of a broken heart, whatever you want to call it it really impacts the future of the, the whole story. So that's what kind of, I guess, sparked people to comment on this thing. So that's what I've got so far. You know, there are a couple of things like I, I've got an, in, I've got a story here, but like there are a few things that I didn't really consider. Like the emperor, for instance, saying that, um, you know, in, it looks like in your anger, you killed her, but like, that's not exactly what happened. So, would he continue have told a lie or would he have said like, Oh, she's still alive. She's still out there. What, you know what, what, what I mean? the emperor like, would say. So I don't really know about that, but oh, he would keep yeah, fueling the, him. Well, he like, would keep saying that's like part- she betrayed you. I can't believe she did this to you. Like he would, he would put the foot on the gas, dude. Well, what, what, no, what my point though is, is that because she mm-hmm. died right in that scene, then he didn't ever think to look for like the kids because she knew, she knew Pat or he knew Padway was pregnant, but if she right. died, the kids died too. So if, if it was actually Anakin that, that like killed her and then in this fictional universe, she lives, well then Palpatine might not have said, um, you know, it looks like in your anger, you killed her. Would he have said that? Or would he have said like, 
oh, you know, she betrayed you. She's still alive. She's still out there. Cause he wasn't lying. He was just kind of like telling him something. And so then that might make him actually change the course of, you know, what he was actually doing. Maybe he's starting to hunt her down or something like that. But I actually kind of took the story from, you know, she's just gone and he, he is assuming that she and the child is dead. And that's kind of where my thing started. So, and I think we all agreed with this is that she would go into exile herself. So she would take the kids and, and the way I kind of see this is like Blade Runner 2049. Like there was this big event happened and then Rachel who was, you know, birthing a, a child had to go into exile to hide the child from the company, if you will. And as that child grew up, eventually her body was incapable of sustaining life for that long. And she passed, which is where the, the beginning of the movie starts. So uh, I, I'm going to say that um, Luke would have, in this case, Luke would have thoroughly been trained under Obi-Wan as well as Leia, because from a certain point of view, I think if both children are there with Padme, then um, Yoda would have presented the idea that both children should have been trained and Obi-Wan would have taught them in the ways of the force. Um, and they kind of like would the, from a certain Jedi. point of view now, sort of story where Yoda said, no, I was talking about the girl. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying is that he, I, we know that Yoda would have said, no, Leia's the one and, and, uh, Obi-Wan would have said, no, Luke's the one. And then they're like, well, right. we'll, we'll train them both. Like there's no now, reason for, for why everyone not to out train there listening. Both. Um, the short story book from a certain point of view has like 40 different stories from 40 different authors. And I forget who wrote that one mm-hmm. off the top of my head, but, uh, it, mm-hmm. it involves Obi-Wan talking with Yoda about, uh, who to train and Obi-Wan's assuming Yoda's talking about Luke and Yoda says her. And he it winds up that he's talking about Leia is the one that he thought to train because she's yeah. less reckless and that sort of thing. Which is sort of confirmation from right. the Empire Strikes well, I, I Back. Just, yeah, I just like, want to bring oh, the that boy's our last hope. He's another. No yeah. That, um, story was. So here's the thing. I think that Padme would have only let the, the kids be trained as a self-defense type of a situation. I think that's mm-hmm. how Obi-Wan would have presented it. Um, she would have said, I, I don't want this to be like a revenge thing. I don't want you to go right, destroy right, yeah. Anakin. Like she still has something in it in her heart for him. But speaking of a broken heart, I do, I don't mind so much that she died of a broken heart or, or that her mental health or whatever was affected by this. I just, I think most people just don't like it that it all of a sudden took over very quickly. But I think that o- over years of her having just not getting gotten over this, that her whole life is ruined. Now she's an exile and all this stuff that just fed into her mental health and possibly her real health. And she passes fairly young. Right. Yeah. Um, in, in, in my fictional made up, uh, <laughs> universe that whatever this fan fiction thing that I'm coming up with. Right. So she dies of the disease. And, um, then at this point, Obi-Wan says, um, all right, kids, this is the time when it, we, we have to go take on Darth now that your mom has passed. Right now, Luke agrees with Obi-Wan. He says, all right, let's do it. Let's go kill him. I hate my father and all this other stuff. But Leia, she wants to honor her mother's wishes. She says, I'm not doing that. That's not what you know, this is all about. So they take her to, you know, the, the Lars homestead and then Luke and Obi-Wan sneak out and they leave to go take on Darth. But when they meet up with him, Darth, uh, is, I mean, he's Darth Vader, right? He kills them both. They're both dead. And because of something that happened in that conversation or during that battle, he gets the clue that there's another one out there and he knows where to find her. So he goes back to Tatooine. This is where he confronts Leia and she, now knowing that Luke and Obi-Wan were murdered at his hands, unleashes the true force within her to defeat her father, avenging the deaths of the mother, the brother, and her father figure, Obi-Wan, who may or may not have, I even quite figured this out because I'm trying to make this as twilight as I can by adding this like <laughs> Othello relationship where like post-traumatic event, maybe Padme and Obi-Wan had some sort of like 
Like, you know, it didn't work out with Anakin, but what about us? You know what I mean? Cause you watch the clone wars and you're like, yeah. come on, man. She never, that dude's got a beard. Like he looks pretty good. So I mean, that's even McGregor right there. So I, I think that like, I think that possibly post-traumatic and like trying to sort all this out and he's there and he's taking care of the kids. I'm sure that if this were a film, you would see some sort of like yeah. tension between well, there were, there were two, people right um because there were he's people being who so gave other takes on like oh i wish how this the prequels went down and they harped on i wish it was more of a love triangle to to really spark anakin's jealousy because they only touch on that for like 20 seconds yeah, in revenge yeah. of the sith and i just didn't buy it so i like that but pat um if padme lives where do you think they would take the story well i first of all <laughs> As much as it would be kind of cool to see this sort of like, you know, butting heads love sort of thing between Obi-Wan and Padme, it just wouldn't work because of the stuff that happened in the Clone Wars where he was in love with the Queen of Mandalore and all of that. And he's he's kind of heartbroken. And as a Jedi... You mean his ex-girlfriend? You know, his, like, ex, his ex-girlfriend, yeah. So <laughs> Natalie Portman there, there. Yeah, so I feel like that's kind of like Darth Maul killing her kind of put Obi-Wan in this mood where he just really has given up on love. The whole point of being a Jedi in the first place is to, you know, not even go in that direction. It was, it was hinted at in the canon that you can just know it away from like step away from like, we're, I feel like we're deviating towards Obi-Wan here. Let's focus on Padme and you know, her (laughs) journey. Like if, if she lives, what is she doing with these kids? She's always been a diplomat. I think there was the line in revenge of the Sith where, uh, Anakin says you're starting to sound like a separatist. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's starting to deviate in that route. If she were to survive, I could see her going back and maybe talking with um, Lux Bon Terry, some of those characters who were in the separatist side of things, and then combine them with what we now know to become the beginning of the Rebel Alliance. She could become a like a undercover political figurehead somebody who's going to get stuff done to help undermine the empire and it would almost be like the thing with uh the resistance versus the first order in the beginning in force awakens how you have pretty much really good uh even strength in a lot of ways butting heads against each other where it's not like just one giant faction versus one small faction it's actually going to be a fair fight here Padme has a lot of interest in the Senate. She could get some of these senators who are just kind of sick and done with the Empire over onto her side. Um, Leia would still get the political stuff that she uh, would learn from the Imperial Senate, but from the separatist angle. Now, Luke would be... Padme would have would to be a, hide, though, in a sense, because, yeah, she would have because to, Vader could yeah. sense her. So she would have to, like... I think part of it- part of this whole thing that I'm like, I love, I love the story of the angle you're going down, but like, this means that she's showing up at Coruscant, yeah, right? That's or tough. is she underground no. with Mon Mothma? And it's like, no, then where she this is, she's be, not- she would have to be hiding where she is. She could help influence people, but she's going to have to hide where she is. She can give her points and stuff, you know, behind closed doors, meetings and things like that. But she might have to be constantly on the run. And you brought up Mon Mothma. And this is a great example. Mon Mothma in rogue one, Uh, shows up but you never see her ever again until return of the jedi thanks to from a certain point of view we know she fled yavin 4 so she's constantly on the move because she's just so popular padme in a way is very similar to um to her or bail organa constantly on the run having to hide what they're up to i feel like padme would have gone the same route I was going to say Mon Mothma still though she's still in the Senate for a long time. She doesn't yeah. actually betray the until Senate she speaks in, out. Until she speaks out in like Rebels era, which mm-hmm. obviously all this stuff is totally different now. Maybe mm-hmm. the fact that she knows Padme's alive influences right. her to do something different, but um yeah. So if we have these different options in terms of what Padme could be doing if she survived whether she goes into exile, takes the kids with her, still leaves the uh, gives the kids away at the advice of Yoda and Obi-Wan where Luke goes mm-hmm. with Owen and and Beru and and mm-hmm. Leia goes with the Organas. Um that could still make sense, but either way in terms of both options, where do you think Vader would be because we know he sensed that she was still alive because when he was with, like James, you were saying, when he was with Palpatine, when he became Vader in the suit, he said, she was alive, I felt it. Like, so he can feel that she was mm-hmm. alive. What would his plan of action be? Gosh, I, I mean, that 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 to me is hard. And I, I actually missed that point, you know, thinking like, well, you know, 
does Vader know she's alive? And I just kind of skipped over it and said, well, assuming Vader thinks she's dead, she's in exile and he's not Mm -hmm. trying to look for her. Just kind of the same way he felt about the children. He wasn't able to feel Luke or Leia and the fact that they were alive or their life force, he couldn't feel theirs. So, but, but apparently he was kind of tied to Padme. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess theoretically, like you were saying earlier, he would probably start up some sort of inquisitor program to specifically go after Padme and and maybe try to convince her to That's what I was wondering, take yeah, him yeah. back or something. Like I like you don't think you start saying a aggressive down, negotiations? No, I'm not saying aggressive negotiations. I'm like, dude, get over it. I broke up with you. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Like Anakin, get a life. Yeah. Go go do something else. She's like, I'm on space Tinder, bro. Yeah. And then Palpatine's over there going like, dude, let's go to the bar. Just yeah. just get over. We'll, we'll, we'll have a couple drinks. It's going to be fine, man. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Just wear your nice helmet. We're going to the nice bars tonight. Um, so, John, you're 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 egging us along. Yeah. So you do you think this means, all right, Darth Vader is feeling the presence of Padme. Is he going after her or is he like, dude, forget that girl? Yeah. So I I'm thinking of because you guys know I love them exploring evil vader and that's why i hate the whole conflicted vader stuff in some of the comics so i like my vader at the end of rogue one type of vader so i'm picturing him just so full of rage and still like thinking about him and uh thinking about padme in terms of her uh her betraying him by bringing obi-wan to mustafar and i almost want to say he like like king kong in a way he wants to like take her prisoner and just be like you're mine and like just like no one else could have her but it's not in a healthy way whatsoever where some people uh-huh. think that he's going to turn back to Anakin or whatever. Uh, so I, I, I could see him going, him being obsessed with her still doing his empire thing, but have nothing to do with Palpatine in this journey. So when Palpatine's off doing his thing, he's off doing his thing, obsessing over her in a very unhealthy way where he just wants to capture her and make her his own, that sort of thing. That's where my brain's going with that. If she survived, whether she went to exile or, and gave the kids away or went to exile with the kids. What a weird what if situation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so crazy to think that one little thing. And I mean, a little thing of like the life or death of a major character <laughs> it mm-hmm. is a it, I guess that's a pretty major thing. But to think that in this whole s- galaxy that the life or death of one single individual could potentially have changed so much about the outcome of mm-hmm. where this is this goes. the biggest one is this the most impactful death in terms of how this the story launches i'm trying to think it's of kind of in the middle uh, it's kind of in the middle of the, the major story like what, what's point, another so. death and what's another big death in star wars that has a bigger impact on the future of a big character or big plot lines than padme amidala's well, death I mean, it's kind of hard because we all have different kind of versions of how it goes. Like, was so Qui-Gon's in my death world, big? you know, like I know, but in my world, maybe Padme is the biggest biggest change. But in your world, you're like, no, I mean, she survives, but then she goes and hides on Tatooine, and nothing really changes. You know, kind of goes back to my original thing, like maybe she lives, but there's a way to tell a story where, like, her life versus her death didn't really make a big difference in the in the larger picture and all the same events ultimately dude, imagine, through fate dude, imagine, happen. Imagine Lucasfilm like really just goes nuts and they create a canon story where they faked her death and she really is alive. Oh I know. I was I was just <laughs> like as you were saying it, I was like, if he goes down the direction of like she's she was faked and like it was uh, like all a big ruse, you know, because they said they said one of the things it was, was Kira that Knightley she was in the casket, look, man. It was Kira Knightley in the well, casket. Well, she was made to look pregnant <laughs> to make everybody think that the babies died with yeah, her. Yeah, right? right. There was something along those lines. And so theoretically, it wouldn't be out of question if they were like, well, we actually just went ahead and like faked her death altogether and she was over here the whole time. But I think. And then she shows up in I episode mean, nine. That's some crazy conspiracy an, stuff. Uh, that's worse than Raylo, man. I mean, that's just not happening. I know, I know, I know. That's like Elvis and Michael Jackson level conspiracy, man. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> Andy Kaufman. He's still around somewhere too. Um, yeah, I mean, any final thoughts on uh, that whole theory? Because I know people out there gave us a bunch, so obviously they're going to let us know what they think. Um, but uh, if it were to happen, I think if it were to happen, man, like I said. 
Luke dies, Obi-Wan dies, Padme still dies, but under different circumstance, and Leia is now a strong mm-hmm. force user, the stronger mm-hmm. of the two, the wiser in the sense that uh, she would be capable of um, you know, understanding passion and, and floating um, through space. And floating through space. No, I mean, you know what I'm saying, though. I think, I think that ultimately, like she, she, like Yoda said, did have the potential to be a greater Jedi. Oh, yeah. but we, we got Luke. You know, we got Luke, and and Leia got to spread her wings elsewhere. So I, I think that ultimately, like Leia would have been a stronger uh, Jedi than than Luke and Obi Wan. But but again, you're asking about Padme. So yeah. But nope. so I got nothing, Pat. What do you got? Yeah. I, I, I feel like if they were to to go down this crazy route, it would it would bring up some really good story plot points and you would see these characters in a completely different way because her death is kind of a make or break situation for both sides and, and the factions in this. Um not including like the huts or or anything out there, you know, leave them out of the story, but um there's a lot at play here. Just one little change can do all this, guys. It doesn't even have to be a life or death thing. You could be like, hey, Poe was a cargo pilot. How does that change the sequel trilogy? I mean, these things are things we think about on a daily basis. So mm-hmm. let's keep the discussion going. If you guys have something else you want us to theorize or talk about, definitely shoot it our way. Yeah, I, I mean, I think knowing Padme, because I know her really well. Um, we were good like friends. We were good friends. We used to go swimming with Paulo back on uh, mm-hmm. Naboo. Um, <laughs> I think she would still give up the kids. Um, mm-hmm. as a because she's not selfish in that sense. So she would want them to be safe. So I think under the guidance of you know Yoda, Obi Wan, and Bail, they would still end up where they wound up. But I think the twist would be the, not the twist. The change would be, um, Vader would kind of sense that she was still alive and go on some kind of crusade to find her and then for some reason he would never wind up finding her and still be tormented by that and then we'd carry back over and still find ourselves in rogue one in a sense where the story didn't change very much um so i i I guess my brain says it would change slightly and make it a little more tragic for darth vader which i like which means he would just kill a lot more rebels anytime he would think about her so that's what that's what I got. But uh, I don't know. This was kind of a wild little discussion. We went on some tangents and did some fan fiction stuff. But what you what you guys think? Was this what you guys thought we were going to get into here? I actually just thought I had a thought of the like whose death would have made the most impact. Probably like Palpatine in in Phantom Menace. And he's like having a conversation. And then like Yoda walks in and he's like, oh, you're the Sith Lord. And then he just happens to like catch him and cut off his head. It's like, well, that's all solved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, there's only, how it should have ended. There's only one thing, Star Wars yeah. movie ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like only halfway through. It's like, at last, our revenge. Oh! And then they it's die. It's a short, like, short movie. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's that's. That's where you throw in the Wilhelm scream. That is how you end it with that Wilhelm scream. All right. Well, I guess you guys have any other thoughts? Are we good here? I guess that was it. This is, where, here, yeah. this is where John gets into those like six degrees of like, if this person dies, like, where does this go? Like, oh, yeah. I would just, get this, just keep the it Charlie going. Day map out <laughs> yeah, and get all crazy like uh, sunny in Philadelphia. Um, so let's talk about the uh, Resistance Expanded Universe, which is a segment we've been trying to pump here, which is just shining some light on the community. Um, when do you guys want to uh, hop into this here and let us know what we have discovered this week? Can't stand it. I'm on your planet. There you go, Pat. So who sent us this? What is it? And uh, what, do, what are your thoughts on it? Introduce it to uh, the resistance out there. Well, we actually got this from a fan. It comes from War Starts at Midnight podcast, and uh, they put together a trailer cut of all the little solo clips and bits and bobs and uh, tied in a little bit of J.J. Abrams' influence with the Beastie Boys sabotage, and this thing is perfect. (laughs) Go check it out. It's absolutely great. We'll definitely have it in the episode description so you guys can watch it. Um, John, how are you feeling? Does Beastie Boys make everything better? I just like whoever edited this really took their time. Like we saw those clips of the throne room theme in The Last Jedi where people just took the scene and just pasted a song over it. And we're like, oh, here, except Jeff Lowe from uh, 
Lights Camera Pod, he actually crushed it with his um, mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy version. So um, props to you, Jeff. But most people just took a song like, oh, what would it sound like if Toto from Africa was on it? Sorry, Bill. Um, but these these guys like took... Not sorry, Bill. The, <laughs> these guys took the, the moments, the hits, and where the music kicks in, and it looked like it was supposed to be a part of it. So like, Pat, you were saying a little nod to J.J. Uh, Abrams' Star Trek because he loves Beastie Boys so much, so that kind of works. Um, but actually, uh, Scotty J. Rowe, um, I think my favorite fan of ours, he's just awesome. He said he actually notified us about this. And uh, if you haven't checked out the trailer, like Pat said, go to YouTube. It's War Starts at Midnight Podcast, and they did um, Beastie Boys Sabotage over the solo teaser. James, did you check this out, and what do you think? I checked it out and I saw it really late at night and I was like, I have to retweet this immediately. And then I was like, you know what? I can't retweet it now because I need more people to see it. So I'm waiting <laughs> until the next day so that when people actually uh, see it, they'd be able to check it out or more people would get in front of more people's eyes. Cause I watched this and I was like, I, I this actually where, is where I kind of first got into media. I used to do, um, for fun, I'd do like these anime, like music videos, or I'd take cl- the clips from like Final Fantasy VII and I put them to Evanescence and Linkin Park. Like, oh mm-hmm. <laughs> that's really like I know, but it was like that's what we had back in the day. Like that was the ex- that was what we understood as underground music. You know, it wasn't on the mainstream radio station; it was on the secondary uh, X radio yeah. station or the Edge or whatever. The edgy radio. So, yeah, exactly. So so that's what we were doing. That's how I got into this stuff. So I respected this as far as like the edit and how that was put together. It, like John, you were saying it was done very well. But um, my thing was, is I kind of stepped back from this and I was like, man, like where does contemporary music fit into Star Wars? Because this trailer might have been better than the real solo trailer and i get it it's not john williams music and i get it star wars doesn't need contemporary music it the the score is what makes star wars great and we've had that debate a million times before but um specifically episode 100 or one what was it 101 or something yeah we talked about the rogue one versus john williams thing but like maybe we should be having a john williams versus beastie boys (laughs) uh (laughs) star wars war because this was great you know and it was also like a big meme at the time that a lot of people were adding this Beastie Boys, the sabotage song, like every trailer looks better. And they did it with Thor, too. They're like, yeah. every trailer's better with uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, immigrant you know, song. Um, immigrant song yeah. played over yeah. it. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, this so, is like a popular so trend. But man. yeah, but but this this was great. This was yeah. done really well. And uh, big props to the podcast that put it out. And uh, even even cooler props to the people who share it. Because that's one of the biggest things about um, the Resistance Expanded Universe is that we're trying to find this stuff, right? But what we want to do is we want to make sure that that stuff doesn't just get lost in some Reddit feed or like every time you post it, it just gets uh, you know, buried at, at 3 a.m. And uh, we, if we want, if we see something we like, we got to find the ample time yeah. and the best way to to yell and celebrate like hey check this out this was really cool Mm -hmm. this is a positive thing that we need in our community um so again uh, i'm embracing this so thanks to scotty jero thanks to the podcast people who put it together good job guys speaking of yelling what did you guys think about lando at the end of that going like (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm telling you they they nailed it man and i i i guess they may have cut it a little bit in terms of the video to help it fit as well but yeah uh, it was uh, it was just really well done. They took their time, and that's that's all that matters. They they're not at it for a buck, and uh, they had a good time with it. And we're all here laughing and enjoying it. So thanks so much to those guys. What was their names again? Yeah, War Starts at Midnight Podcast. So good for you guys. Thank you. Good job. And uh, yeah, like James was saying, anytime you see anything interesting or fun in the Star Wars fan community, tag us, send it to us, email to us, resistancebroadcast at gmail dot com. Uh, send it to our personal accounts. James is always talking to people about crazy stuff. Um, so is Pat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's so whatever. Just send it to us. We want to keep shining light on it and bringing attention to all that stuff. So um, be sure to subscribe to our show uh, on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Leave us a five star rating and review on iTunes, and like our episodes on SoundCloud and YouTube. Uh, head over to our store, tpublic.com/user/resistancebroadcast and pick up Resistance Broadcast merchandise. 
just like Kane and Jairus, our Doom shirt is not going to be around forever, and our Grand Thrawn shirt will be gone on Monday as well. So be sure to hop over to the store to pick up those while you still can. And we have plenty of more fun designs coming your way. Um, I was actually at the movies a few days ago and saw Black Panther, and I was wearing my Gary the Porg shirt. And this 10-year-old kid came up to me and he goes, I really like your shirt. That's really cool. And he was with his mom. I couldn't really explain about the podcast, but wear the shirts. People will talk to you. It's a good time. It's fun. And uh, join the party. So for all of your latest Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, and information, go to our website, StarWarsNewsNet.com. James, where can people reach you? Well, you can always reach me on Twitter and Instagram at Meyer Trunks. It's M-I-R-A-H-T-R-U-N-K-S. You can also find me on the Resistance Broadcast YouTube account. I'm the guy who's kind of keeping track of all those comments. Like I also post sometimes, too, on uh, on Reddit in the Star Wars Speculation subreddit. Um, they were they were nice enough to add a little Star Wars Newsnet tag to my name. So when I post things and I'm responding to fans uh, based on uh, the videos that we post these episodes, um, that it's there kind of marking that I'm with the website and I may, I don't know, I'm a crazy dude, but maybe I have some, a little bit of authority or maybe I have a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Just give me that little bit extra. Yeah. And then I, and then I'm on DBZ, so it doesn't make any sense at all. But, uh, yeah, that's where you can guys can find me. All right, Pat, where you at? Well, you guys can find me saying, Ooh, in your ears <laughs> twice weekly uh, or you guys can find me in my dark room editing these podcasts you guys are listening to now twice weekly or you guys can follow me on twitter at gana136 or gana136 over on the cantina forum if you guys are not already checking out the cantina forum i highly recommend it it's a great community of star wars fans you guys can join it's 100 percent free and there's always fans on 24 7 yeah, there's like 8,000 people on that thing, right, Pat? Yeah, this thing's like, it's blowing up. If you haven't already joined in, the discussions are ridiculous. You thought our Padme discussion was crazy. Go check some of the stuff out on there. <laughs> and also, you can find Pat in our question vault. Every Monday, he's bringing us the questions. Uh, just the other day, you heard, we went through about five of them. So just keep the questions coming our way. Send them to our email or our Twitter account and we'll answer them on the show. My name is John Hoey. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing articles and editorials at StarWarsNewsNet.com. Thank you for listening. Please keep spreading the word to your friends and family, dentists, barbers, hairdressers, really anyone you know that likes Star Wars. It's the best way for us to spread the word of our show. If you haven't yet, hop on Twitter and retweet our contest tweet to enter the Last Jedi Bundle giveaway. Midweek, unretweet retweet it so more people see it because we need to hit 750 retweets in order for that giveaway to be activated so just keep being active on that once we get to 750 retweets it is active and we will pick a winner in about two weeks so just take a minute hop on there retweet it if it, after a few days you want more people to see it get rid of that retweet and retweet it again I just said retweet a lot of times we'll be back here with you on Monday morning so make sure you are subscribed and ready for our next transmission right here on the Resistance Broadcast.